It is currently 12.03 at midnight for me, but I just got home from the gym. But I have to go over this important video for you guys because I'm going to give you guys one tip for every attacker from my five years of playing Siege, my, my big brain. I'm going to give it to you guys. I have some really spicy operator tips for some of these, so be sure to watch until the end. The first operator we have is Sledge. And what I would say one tip for Sledge is that you need to be careful of C4s obviously when you're starting your sledge and everyone always see four of you in your first maybe four hammer strikes so after two strikes try to be unpredictable and go a different corner every single time after the first two step on something a bulletproof or hard proof and wait for the c4 rip if you don't hear it then keep going but after two more then you want to kind of like mix up your pattern now you wait boom a c4 will go off Next up, we have Thatcher. Now, my tip for Thatcher is that if you can't really get into a room safely, you can always do it from the roof. This works on Cafe, Oregon, but you can always get the wall from the roof. Next up, we have Ash. Now, Ash is a pretty old operator, so she's a very simple operator, but a lot of people don't really realize that you can actually avoid all the Jaeger ADSs with my gadgets if you're solo queuing. Let's say if you need to get rid of a shield, right? And you can just go below and always get shields for vertically. This way, it will, it will destroy any shield from below and you'll be good to go. Moving on to Thermite. This one actually surprised me a lot. Whenever going up against a Mew Jammer on a wall, don't worry for any teammates to come get you. You can actually repel up a little bit higher out of the mute radius, and you can actually go for the wall. Now, I don't have any mute with me, but if you go against a muted wall, put it up a little bit higher, and it will actually go off because it's out of the radius in, in the recent mute nerf. Next up, we have Twitch. Now, with Twitch, I think a lot of players are, are not utilizing the infinite range so for example on bank if you ever ever trying to get the elevator wall open but there's a k claw you can actually get any kind of k claw or bayonet charge that you want just utilize the infinite range and it can really get you a lot of uh, free opening rounds you can even shut the default cam all right next up we have the big guy monty now, monty's a pretty straightforward operator i mean overall his presence it really does the most but what i found to actually be really effective at times to really scare my enemies is unextending randomly and then un uh, re-extending back if I do this a little bit more, depending on the time, you know, putting some random hip fires, he's never really going to know when I'm going to ADS. So I can like, do this. He will like, oh, he's not going to, he's not going to, you know, shoot me. But then when he least expects it, I'll just, you know, bah, bah, bah. moving on to Glaz now. Ooh. Now, my tip for Glaz is actually after his recent buff, he actually has a gone six and grenades. And also he can have the bearing nine if you want. So if you trust yourself with the DMR or the sniper, you can go close range or long range. I would recommend that you run the Gon 6 if you really trust your gun ability, because now you have three destructibles like Zofia. You know, you can use two nades below, and then you can come up and say there's a shield, right? Maybe something you need to clear, like a Banshee. Then you will whip out your Gon 6. Um, I have the pairing right now, but you have your Gon, and then now you become a fragger. So you see a lot of utility you could bring to the team is what I think uh, could be really useful. Honestly, man, if you guys want to see me use glass, tune into my stream. I'll actually use them. And moving on to Fuse. So let's say if there's shield, right? If there's a shield like if you guys think about it, it's six or four grenades into one spot now that's pretty that's pretty good and that kind of puts up a lot of pressure to your enemies so the next time if you're ever dealing with a pesky shield try to go above it and you'll take it out from there and one bonus tip if you want to be extra sneaky let's say if you're ever trying to push somewhere a little bit off you would actually put the fuse charge there and then late round let's say if you're trying to cover up some noise or make some distraction you would set it off and then you push him the opposite side, maybe catching some enemies off guard. And moving on to the scary dude Blitz. Now for Blitz, I would say is really, he's really the kind of a menace, bro. But the only weakness I would say is be careful of your feet and your arms. Want to try to close the distance as safe as you can, you know, crouching, covering your legs. But know when the perfect fly, time is to flash. And also don't prematurely aim down because you could be a really easy kill. So be sure the next time you use Blitz, try to close the distance, use cover. And also, you know, once you get a good flash on, you see his blind, try to go for the hip fire and really just, you know, go for the kill. Moving on to IQ now. Now, I think IQ is actually pretty underrated, but I mean, the only tip I have for is to use your scanner to really get more information rather than destroying gadgets too. Um, you can also, you know, you can roam clear if you're trying to find a vigil. Uh, you can find him if you're trying to find pulse. She's really good for uh, tracking those guys down, even if you don't have any drones. But one of my favorite thing is definitely using her against Valkyrie and also going below. It's a lot of fun to collect all the utility from below. And if you're really lucky, you might be able to find someone on their cameras and you can wallbang them. Next, we have Buck. So I actually have two things for Buck. I just want to point out that one, it don't overlook the heart breaching gadgets because it can really uh, be flexible with your operator choices. So if I can get uh, first a dirt or open, for example, but let's say they're bringing a lot of C4s 
for the kitchen bomb site and make vertical is pretty hard right so if you actually make third floor is clear you can actually make vert all the way from the third floor now i'm a lot safer i'm still making the same vert that i would be able to if i was um already in kitchen so kind of play around with this and see if uh your, you know the pulses will be very annoyed that they can't see for you next up we have guys please do not run this operator moving on to my boy capital did you know the capital that bullet holes are actually still existing watch this you can actually send one right through the wall oh <laughs> okay okay Dude. <laughs> Did you know that you can send a uh, capital bolt through a bullet hole in this game? So watch this. You can actually send it through and it went through the hole. I thought bullet holes didn't exist, but it's just more the client side. You can't see through them anymore, but they still can go through. Moving on to Hibana. Did you know that with Hibana, you can actually get any K claw off the hatch very, very easily without a grenade or anything going below. So what you do is if you put a pellet on the side of the wall, I don't have another player in the lobby with me. But if you do it right here or any kind of corner of the hatch, the, the, the radius of the K-Claw cannot go any further than the Hibana uh, radius of the blow-up the blow thing. That's really, really good. And then if they're impact tricking, always put two. Don't put all six on because you're wasting your pellets and you might lose yourself around. So save them, put two pellets on, and you will get your hatch open very successfully. I've literally dealt with people who had six impact grenades and a K-Trick, and I went through all of it. They couldn't stop me because I'm top G. Next up, my foot fetish operator jackal honestly jackal is very self-explanatory so the only tips i would say for him is mostly just target make sure your entry point is very close to a roamers or maybe if you see a roamer have passed a certain room get their footsteps as fast as you can and so when you see their footprints then they don't have a lot of place to roam and you want to be somewhat aggressive because these tracks are really going to help you win the round. So I would say leave a pre-place in a room that you want to enter. And if you see someone pass by where they go, find those footprints and you'll eventually find the enemy a lot quicker. Next up, we have Ying. The first thing I would say for Ying is that you want to practice the timing of your candela. So if you just throw a dud, it will uh, take a little bit longer. So this is where you would send to a longer distance. But let's say if you want to charge it, if you wait for the second blink, then you hear like the two blinks, it'll go up a lot quicker. But then if you do a third charge, one, two, three, and then you can just hold it wherever you want and it'll explode on impact right here. On impact. So kind of master that and I guarantee you your distance with Ying and timing would be a lot easier. Oh, and also one more thing. I ran out of candelas, but you can actually put them through the wall. So if there's a soft wall, you know, try it out. Next up, we have Zofia. Now, my tip for Zofia is one thing I learned a lot from playing her is not being afraid to use concussions uh, if you're out of drones. Let's say uh, someone shoots your drone, right? And you don't know where they are. Let's say you're out of drones. What you would do is you would use your concussions as kind of like a finding of someone is. So let's say if I didn't know if anyone's in, in uh, security side, I would throw it that way. If, so, if it goes off immediately... That means somebody's in there. But let's say if I were to put to my left side here and it doesn't go off, that means office is clear. The radius is actually very big of the Zofia charge. So use them. Don't be afraid to use them. It's better to use them than die with them in your pocket. And also it just gives you, a, it really sets you up for an easier gunfight. So if it goes off immediately in there, swing wide, bro, they're not going to be able to hear or see you. You're going to get yourself a free kill. So be confident. Be a top G. All right, here we got Dokubi next. So with Dokubi, I would say is to know when the right time to call is. Now you'll be wondering, what is the right time to call? For example, let's say your initial entrance should be used by drones. You shouldn't waste a call on random unless someone is trying to rush your team and you want to make a distraction. Go for it. But your drone should be initially used to get yourself inside the building that way when you call you have enough time to reach the person let's say the bomb site's in penthouse bro and you're trying to you hear someone's roaming downstairs what you would do is activate the call and then dude that'd be very scary if the call went off and no one's in my lobby that'd be fucking scary anyways but like you would listen for the call and you would gravitate towards that person with the alt key the walk key that way you can really start to get the jump on them. And also don't be forget, don't forget to hack cams because hacking cams can really give you some good information throughout the round. And next up we have Lion, my favorite operator in the game. Cap, I actually one of my favorites operators. All right, don't flame me when I say this, but this is exactly what I use in Challenger League and this is how I got a lot of kills with Lion. Think about it, Lion is the king of a jungle in, in animals, right? But you kind of have to have the mentality of every time a Lion skin goes off that you're controlling the match. Think about if you were to get a line call on defense, maybe, you know, it would kind of like confuse you or throw you off a little bit with your game. No matter what, if you hear a lion scan, you know, you all have to stand still. It kind of disturbs you from what you're doing. 
Think about on defense. Now, you should always activate a lion call off of information. Don't just do it randomly. Like, you know, walking out of spawn, if they're spawn picking, I honestly don't think you need to do it. It's a waste. Don't do that. Just use your lion call when someone is about to push someone or maybe, you know, your team's getting set up through the round and you have extra line calls, don't be afraid to pop one just to keep people in place. But don't just do them randomly. I mean, just think about it. If you're if you're in like a 1v1 situation, you hear that bing, 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 boom, 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 boom. Dude, I'm sorry, bro. Lion's winning that. All right, next up, we have Finca. I mean, it's, it's Finca. The only thing I would say is activate your surges when someone, even if someone on your team loses one, like a little bit of HP, use it but i think a big mistake some people would do is activating boosts when they're not even like when they're off full hp but if you're about to get into a gunfight i would say that's appropriate but don't be don't be using your boost like randomly without without any meaning like i said with zofia it's better if you uh use them all before you die but then rather than die with like two surges left now moving on to maverick which maverick is one of the hardest attackers in the game in my opinion now i would say the tip for maverick is that every operator every player should know how to make a wall soft with maverick going across and cross but everyone in our country knows that what but what i kind of learned playing maverick i think you should definitely learn that maverick is also about pressure too Sometimes you can make holes on a wall and then leave it the entire round and it will create a lot of pressure for the uh, uh, defending team. And understand that you can actually make little crouch holes as well. That way, you know, it takes it's very easy to get the reinforced walls without having to make it um, so big. Obviously on cash wall, you might want not want to do this, but on different walls, you guys kind of get the point. But also, you know, Swiss cheesing a wall can also cause a lot of pressure for anybody going in because they don't know what hole to look, uh, look at. Just be careful not to look through them yourself too much. And next up, we have Nomad. Now as Nomad, I would say you should know exactly where to put all three of your air jabs before the round even starts. For example, you know to put one through the flank on the hookah balcony. Uh, let's say also, people do crouch under your, your Nomads a lot. They can actually, if you put them really far uh, close on the door, they can actually prone and shoot them off, which is not very good. So, you know, get tricky with your Nomads. It has a very long range, so put them in a hard spot where people can't really uh, get to shoot them here. Oh, that, well, actually that one's pretty easy don't do that one <laughs> but like maybe like directly like directly above someone they can even do that but make it hard for someone to get it and i mean get creative with them just get creative like for example i do this one and anybody that does get past this one because we're already pushed up um maybe they have dropped the hatch and they think it's always clear but then they you know they get stuck right here and by the time they go prone to try to shoot it off we're already uh, about to kill them so get creative with your air jabs but I guarantee you, you will have a lot better air jabs if you know exactly where you're putting them before the round even starts. Communicate with your team. Next up, we have Gridlock. Now, Gridlock is actually a pretty, like, she's almost too easy to use. All you have to do is just make sure you're putting the track stingers in an area, like on a staircase. I think she's they're really good on the staircases because they have to go through up them. Um, but, I mean, she's, she's really easy to use. The only thing I would say is you can also mix in the smoke grenades with the track stingers, so that way it's, it's harder to shoot them while they're going off. Like I said, for Nomad, she's the same type of flank watch that you should use her um, only when you know exactly where you're going to put your gridlock uh, tracks at. Otherwise, she's pretty useless in my opinion if you're not going to be watching her too much. Now, moving on to Nock. Now, Nock is an interesting one. Now, for Nock, I would say is understand that element of surprise is probably your best trick in the book. Obviously, we all know to cloak before we hit a default camera. That way, they can't see us. I think wherever you want to go, put a pre place of where you want to go, have someone sit on it. And don't be afraid to be a little aggressive, you know, because at the end of the day, you are the one having to jump on them. They don't know you're coming through. And you're actually quieter when you have this thing activated. But knock all the time, I would recommend that you enter kind of across of where the bomb site is on the map. That way you can enter a more quiet spot. And then, the you know, the deeper inside the building you get, the more dangerous you become. The only thing I would say is right when you're about to run out, I would say before you hit a default camera, like right here, sit, recharge for about five seconds and then go in. And then, you know, you'll be able to catch an enemy a lot quicker. Now, moving into Amaru, like I said, like, I don't mean, Amaru is really like, she's... You just have to get crazy with her, honestly. The only thing I would say is before where you're trying to Amaru, maybe try to have a pre-placed camera in that area. That way you can kind of have an idea where you need to put your cross replacement. But she's honestly kind of a YOLO. Um, you know, if you die repelling in or either you're taking down one with you. But I think don't forget that you can go up a, you can go up hatches a lot. So don't uh, underutilize that. If there's a hatch in sight. Now going up to Kali. I mean, Kali is a very, I think she's a very under underwhelming op right now in, in today's meta. She doesn't have a very good gun, even at the secondary. But I mean, the only thing I can really say is just use your 
you know use your gadget a lot but otherwise Callie is just she's, she's not very good right now next up we have a popular operator Ayana now Ayana is kind of like what I talked with Zofia she's a very easy operator to use you know especially with her clone but um you know I just say have confidence when you play with Ayana um you know push it even if you're pushing in you have a 1.5 ARX you can take enemies on really really easily and I, think, I don't think a lot of people realize that but her clone actually recharges in about like eight to ten seconds it's actually really quick so i mean if you think about it, she's literally free intel every single time you can burn a rooney gates um use use it to burn any rooney gates anything like that to get um try to get enemies out of their state and i think one more th good thing is to practice uh fake cloning you know if you ever want to like fake an enemy you would just cancel that rise before you go in and then you can kind of fake out an enemy they might not think you're a real one just like some old friends from high school man they don't know i'm a real one man tough sauce man and one more thing i see a, i don't know why it's only ayana mains but they use their gone six just to open up random stuff and they waste it come on if you're not trying to surprise someone stop wasting your gone six all right next up we have ace now ace is a very straightforward hard reach i think everybody kind of knows how to use them the only thing i would say is that if you're trying to make a line of sight and you don't want enemies to kind of use the hole against you like rotate on you then you know you can use the ace charge to have it make a head hole like Hibana almost then after that you would just shoot the bottom and then now it's only a head hole like a mirror now you can make it your line of sight but they can never rotate into it this is actually very useful in some situations so don't be afraid to uh, use it and you know i was gonna say you know don't ace too high because i don't know why some people just do this i don't care why people do this <laughs> what am i like a seven foot basketball player bro am i supposed to hop through this but yeah just don't be, be careful with your placement just aim like aim like head level man all right next up we have one of my favorite operas in the game zero now i play a lot of experience on zero so one of my uh one of my tips for him is to understand that you are a flank watch but you are always ready to come back to your team so once you get all of your cameras down you know you are in charge of the flank that way your team doesn't have to worry about it and your cameras their cameras not air jabs which are very very useful because you know information is very powerful in this game so you know get creative with your spots try to learn some good uh angles for the flank and then boom now you can come help your team you don't have to sit down there actively watching it you can check it periodically and position yourself if you need to help your team we know help clear a shield or heart breaching gadget he's a very very strong with this kind of stuff but also use your zero cameras to blend in with bright objects and it's a little bit harder to see them also just remember that zero cams can also go through walls so don't forget that so if you ever need to get a k-claw off the wall just put it through the floor and then zap it i mean honestly zero i'm giving you guys like five tips for zero because he's so good all right next up we have flores all right let me see if this still works but back when i know you could actually jump your flores drones uh, a little bit higher actually let's try this here let's try right like this if you jump your flores drones a little bit high like this you can actually get them to touch the ceiling so let's see if it works one two and then three so you can actually if you put punch holes you can actually get them on the ceiling and clear any shield from below it's it's really really nuts let's try it one more time on this wall so i would aim it around around like you know knee level first and then the next one i do like you know just kind of like right in the half between let's try it out right now let's see if it works man this is crazy how floors can do this um you want to be careful don't move your drone literally take your hands off the keyboard and then just gonna jump up They're already there so look how good that is that's really really strong uh honestly i feel like people gotta do this more now moving on to osa now i think osa is a very easy operator very self-explanatory i don't have any, anything to give you guys that you probably already wouldn't know because she's such, such an easy operator and moving on to the final operator this season sense now since i would say he is a very underwhelming operator at the moment but you shouldn't underestimate what he can do i think instead of you know doing the usual people might be like oh i'm gonna you know send it through sight but sometimes it can be kind of tricky to get exactly what you want so let's say if i wanted to play it right here right practice instead bouncing them off the wall is a lot easier because as you can see it'll bounce off a wall and it will cover a lot more if it's at a different trajectory so this way i can get a plant down and then boom free free plants but otherwise i would just say try to bounce your sense gadgets off uh, walls rather than just putting straight down the middle it really depends on what uh, angle you're trying to get though thank you guys for watching if i miss any important tips that you guys want to mention leave in the comments below and educate so people can get better together